In this video, we'll learn about the variance of normally distributed data. Variance is one measure of the amount of variation of the values of the variable for your data. So that makes sense. Variance is a measure of variation. And in fact, the larger the variance, the more spread out or varied the data is. Another measure for the spread of data, remember, is standard deviation. And standard deviation and variance are linked. And in fact, the sc standard deviation is calculated as the square root of the variance. So it's actually easier to calculate variance by hand. But once you've done that, you can quickly find out the standard deviation for your data by just taking the square root. Another thing that you should know is this symbol that is typically associated with variance. And that symbol looks like this. So that means that the standard deviation symbol, because the standard deviation is the square root of variance, is just this symbol without the squared sign. By the way, this symbol is a Greek letter called sigma. And we use it, again, for both variance, except with a squared with it, and for standard deviation. So next we're going to talk about how can we actually calculate the variance of data. If we have a list of data, how can we calculate its variance? And therefore, figuring out the standard deviation as well. Although for now, we're just going to focus on variance. Well, it first depends on if you know the data for the whole population or just for a sample of the population. That will change the formula slightly. So first, let's talk about if we know the whole population. So to find the variance, what you need to know is three different things. You need to know x, which is really all of the different values of data. So there are multiple values for x. So if there are 100 different things in your population, you have 100 different values for x. You also need to figure out mu, which is the mean of your data, because in order to figure out the variation, you have to be thinking about how far away is the data from the mean. That helps you to measure the spread. And the last thing that you need to know is n, which is the number of data points you have. So if there are 100 different pieces of data in your population, then n would be 100. And once you know these things, you can calculate variance. What you do is calculate the difference between each data value in your data set and the mean, because you're trying to figure out how far away is everything from the mean. Then for each of those, you're going to square those values. So it helps to make a table to keep track of this. So you have all of those different values squared. Then you're going to take the sum of all of them. So that's why, again, it helps if you have a table. And then divide by n, which was the number of data points that you had. And that's how you find variance. So as you can see, this is a pretty time-consuming process. But it is possible to do by hand, especially if you have a pretty small population. And now we'll see how the formula changes if we only have a sample of our population as opposed to all the data for the full population. If we only know the sample, again, you need to know your data values. Instead of knowing the whole population mean, because you probably don't know that since you don't have the whole population, you want to find out the sample mean, x bar. And again, you need to know how many... Um, data points you have in your sample. And the formula will look basically exactly the same, except mu is replaced by x bar with one additional change. You still will figure out the difference between each data point and the sample mean, and then square all of those and sum them all up for all that you have. But the difference is, in this case, you'll divide by n minus 1. The reason for this is you know that if you only have a sample, you're going to be less accurate than if you knew the whole population. 
But sometimes it is completely unfeasible or unrealistic to figure out the data for all the population. So for example, if you wanted to figure out something about um, everyone in the United States, it's not possible or feasible to figure out that information about every single person. So you just pick a sample. And so you divide by n minus 1 to help with the bias that might exist in your sample. Because it's only a sample, it might not be truly representative of the whole population. You do your best, and the larger the sample, the more accurate your variance and your data will be. But you divide by n minus 1 to help avoid underestimating the variance. So that's how you can figure out variance for normally distributed data. And again, this helps you to figure out how spread out or varied is your data and can also then help you to figure out the standard deviation for your data set.